You don't want to miss a minute of today's show. We got more matchups, more trade fallout, some very strong emotions, and you're going to love every minute of it. Subscribe right now. Leave us a comment with the players you need to deliver this week, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Jay Grizz, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway in the building. Whoa, Jay Grizz getting first billing. Impressive work, Jay. I've pretty much ignored him the last two days. That is right. If you haven't caught on... Over the last two episodes, Mike has not just been silent. He's not been here. Yeah, Mike has got a couple days uh, with the family, and we'll be back on Monday. Jason will have Sunday live. Oh, man. Oh, man. Keep reminding me. <laughs> Every time someone tells me, I'm like, oh, yeah. I just hope I remember on Sunday. Well, I would say that when you get to uh, maximum tilt, which will be early Sunday morning, that could be a reminder that you have to talk about it publicly mm. at BallersLive.com. Perfect. Jason edition, which is great. I think it's great. I mean, uh, Mike is uh, he's with his family and had a real bad night, fantasy-wise, because and, – and many of you did. A lot of you really, really did. Yeah, Joe Burrow's injury. Yeah. Uh, that's Mike's uh, dynasty quarterback, and there's so many of your quarterbacks going. I mean, he's had a great run, Joe Burrow. And then you had Mark Andrews, catastrophic injury, beginning of the game, right before he was heading in for a near touchdown. Now we're hearing he's going to be gone for the year. And, I mean, this is this is major, major impactful news. This is a Thursday to forget. For a lot of yeah, people. it it was it was brutal across the board. I know Jamar Chase got the garbage time touchdown, but still disappointing performance for him. You feel like you lost Jamar Chase to some degree, depending on what comes out with the injury to Joe Burrow. A lot of people played Tyler Boyd because without Higgins and a high scoring affair, Boyd's been good, but obviously backup quarterback Boyd is not one you want to play. Yeah, I mean, you saw Jake Browning immediately. It's the it's the age old tale we've brought up so many times. The practice, the the twos, right? He goes straight to Trent Irwin on like a ton of passes. The guy he's probably running reps with the most often. But um, you know, huge game for Mixon, over twenty fantasy points in our league. Uh, huge game for Gus Bus, mm -hmm. two more touchdowns. Big game for Lamar relative to how it began. Yeah, 264 and two, along with uh, 54 rushing yards. Deucer's Alley, a little bit bare today. Um, obviously, Al Borland couldn't show his face. Uh, he was too embarrassed after the backlash yesterday, so he he left. Uh, he's I think he's on a cruise with his uh, his wife. But that's actually more dangerous for him because that's international waters. Right, and you where can I could do out. anything I wanted. Yeah, there are no laws on cruise ships, just so people know. <laughs> If you're on a cruise ship, you could do anything. Yeah, I got you some want. friends on the cruise ship too. Uh oh, that are gonna you some know. Foot Clan. But I mean, look, he his quarterback's down, Joe Burrow. So we got to see what the news is going to be for Joe Burrow. To be fair, he doesn't want his quarterback to be up. I know, I know. But um, yeah, lots to talk about. That was kind of the summary of last night's game. Keaton Mitchell, you know, it was real, real bad. It was still pretty bad. This was not what you hope for I feel like he could have had a successful fantasy day if he had better shoes it seemed like there Dude, were like, it wasn't just him there were like three times where it was like he made a cut to an open lane I mean, where this, you, you you know what happens if he hits that cut and he slipped over was, and over this and over. was the Lamar Jackson story for the whole night Lamar Jackson literally went down six or seven times on slips or losing his footing and then they'd show the replay and the cleats were just flying so I, I think that, yeah, you're right. They didn't they either weren't wearing the right cleats or the field was in a really bad shape. What's important to me when it comes to Keaton Mitchell, because I know a lot of people picked him up. Some people played him. Everyone who did that would be very disappointed. Uh, obviously, uh, a, a very bad fantasy performance that stinks, but 
going forward, what I saw was really good for him. Like Justice Hill is has been usurped. Uh, Keaton Mitchell got eight carries to Justice Hill's one. So it looks to me like it's going to be Keaton Mitchell and Gus Edwards. You still saw the speed on display for that one twenty-one yard run uh, from Keaton Mitchell. So I'm I'm actually like. What I saw last night made me more bullish, not less bullish in Keaton Mitchell going forward, despite a very poor end of the day stat line. Yeah, and, and Beckham was the the best receiver of the bunch. I mean, Zay Flowers had a sixty eight yard touchdown called back, but he's had a lot called back this year. He also had another one where he was almost in bounds. You know, Beckham hurt his shoulder. They they're, they're thinking it might not be a long term thing, but you know, with Andrews going down, I'm sure Tuesday's waiver show will yes. include Isaiah Likely. Isaiah yeah. likely had two targets, no catches. Yeah, and it's it's going to include the wide receivers. Part of the problem for the wide receivers has been that they aren't the number one read. It's it's Mark Andrews. But with him out of the way, there's going to be fantasy relevance in the wide receiving core for Baltimore. So we'll have to figure that out on Tuesday's episode. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Well, every Friday we give away $100 to FantasyChamps.com to somebody that supports the show. And Brian Lestico, congratulations. You are the winner of that $100. Thank you. Lestico! Let's, okay. You see what I did there? Sounded like a little Luigi-esque. <laughs> um, it's a me. Foot Clan Friday, congratulations, Brian. And uh, thank you to everybody who supports the show at jointhefoot.com. We appreciate you did you have something to add yeah just it tis the season we are getting close to the holidays and also to the fantasy playoffs so fantasychamps.com uh it's just one of those things keep it in your memory for when you need your hardware that's where to go trophies trophies uh, championship rings belts. belts oh i love michael King. i do too yeah news and notes from around the league presented by usaa insurance Keenan Allen returned to a limited practice. Uh, he'll be out there. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Gerald Everett did not. No, no. And he has been very uninvolved. And it, I, I wouldn't go to par him either. I just think you, you hope for some, you know, Guyton and Johnston involvement. Probably won't get it. Probably be a lot of Eckler and Allen. Got news this morning. Yeah, read it. Do I have to? You uh, sure do. Devon HN will return this week, barring a setback, remained limited at practice. So HN should be back out on the field against the Raiders. I I know I should be unbiased about this news and, and just hooray, uh, hooray, 12.6 a carry coming back to the field. But? But I have to face him, and that's, that's, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he is going to be a risky play. The fact that he is limited at practice, I don't like seeing that. I mean, Raheem Mostert also limited at practice, so this is this could be just you know the the treatment they're giving their primary running backs. But you've got uh, Salvin Ahmed, who was a full participant in practice, so it is it is legitimate that he was limited. I don't believe they're going to give him one hundred percent pre injury full workload, but I don't think he needs that to be to have a good fantasy day. You don't think the guy that's averaging 12.1 uh, a carry needs that? I mean, what do you think his maximum opportunities have been? I mean, he had 22 in the – so so he had 22 in the monster game, the 50-point game. Yeah. 13 opportunities the next game, 25 fantasy points. 11, uh, 12 opportunities the next game, 21 fantasy points. So, yeah, I'm terrified. That's I'll be terrified – Every snap of Jameer Gibbs when you face him mm -hmm. and every snap of Devon A. Chan when you face him is pure terror. Yeah, when you've got those guys who can just rip off however many yards are left on the field at any time, it is a lot of fun to watch when they're your player and very scary when they're against you. It reminds me of when Jonathan Taylor had his monster year. I remember I was playing against him and he managed to be held in check and the Colts were winning by multiple scores, and they were just running out the clock. And there was like like a play or two left in the game. It's like the whole defense knows, and he broke like a 75-yard touchdown right up the middle, and it erased all of my hopes and dreams of the day. That's what A-Chan and Gibbs can do. 
Khalil Herbert upgraded to full. Deontay Foreman limited, and uh, the matchup and situation there. I just I think we're trying to avoid the Bears. It's preferable. Damian Pierce still sidelined. Not expected to play in Week 11 is what I've seen out there. Also, Noah Brown remains sidelined. We'll talk about that matchup today. Lockett still sidelined with the hamstring. He's been managing that all year. We'll talk about that today. We'll talk about Madison and Jefferson, and we'll talk about Garrett Wilson. Those are all matchups coming up on today's show. We do have the fantasy uh, face-off oh, as yeah. well. Fun at the end of the show. So we'll get Mike's. Uh, he submitted a lineup. Jason's got a lineup, and I'm trying to avoid a turkey uh, of of shame losses. A turkey yes. of shame mm-hmm. on Thanksgiving, nonetheless. <laughs> oh no! Now I'm really doomed. Yeah. Yeah, the that turkey's would, coming. Because whoever loses this week will be the megalodon shame yeah. person. And I'll tell you right now. It's probably, I'm going to tell you right now. If you get a turkey on be, Thanksgiving week, yeah. I'm putting you back in my turkey mask that you made me wear. Oh, did I do that? Yeah. And I've <laughs> oh. already been in there, so it's it's worse now. Oh, man. Yeah, the germs after years probably don't go away because yeah. that's like a incubator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. I'm excited to talk about our first game. Yesterday we covered the Steelers, Browns, Bears, Lions, Chargers, Packers, Raiders, Dolphins, Giants, Commanders, Cowboys, Panthers, Titans, Jags. That was very fast. Today we're covering a bunch more matchups, including the highest over under of the week, the Arizona Cardinals at 2-8 and eight against the 5-4 and four Houston Texans. DraftKings Sportsbook line has Houston as five point home favorites. The over under is forty eight points. Does that does that line feel right? I think so. I think so. It's I, the uh, it's the most the Texans have been favored since week sixteen of twenty twenty. Yeah, I mean, people were wondering if my almost upset was coming up on yesterday's show. They thought that you know maybe the Raiders game or something. I, I go weeks without them sometimes. Yeah. If something jumps out, like, and I get this one. This one makes some sense, but, like, the Cardinals' offense is projected for 21 and a half points. I think they'll get there. It's just I don't think they can stop what Houston is bringing to the table. Uh, and what are they bringing to the table? They're bringing the best rookie we've seen in a long time in C.J. Stroud, who has averaged 339 passing yards and 2.8 passing touchdowns at home. They're bringing the AFC Offensive player of the week, mm. Devin Singletary, who went 30 for 150 and one last week with no Damian Pierce. They're bringing Nico Collins back, likely from the calf injury, and Tank Dell. Who is my start of the week and my problem uh, this week? A uh, little. Uh, you know, some story time? little story time here. I woke up to the wrath in my Slack DMs. Yeah, there were some curse words. There were some curse words um, in capital letters. <laughs> Last night, I'm standing in my kitchen just thinking about fantasy football, as we do. <laughs> yeah, we, right and now, we really do. I had been kind of working a trade for Tank Dell, and I had been being pretty cheap about it uh, because this manager was you know, trying to just get a little bit of something for him, didn't need him. Trade put him, deadline Put him this on the week, block, yeah. trade deadline. This. So I'm standing in my kitchen, and I think to myself, I think... I think Tank Dell could be the dude. I think the rest of the season he could help me win a championship. I need to just pay up. I need to get him. I want him in this matchup. I need him in my lineup. I'm going to go pay whatever it takes to get him because I knew whatever it takes wouldn't be extraordinary. It would just be a a fair deal. So I I go to Sleeper. I open the app. I click on uh, that, that manager's name. Click trade. Click next. And I can't find Tank Dell. Where'd he I'm go? Like, Where did he go? Where's Tank? We were just talking about this trade. Why Why can't I find... So I exit out. I go to the chat log. I scroll up a little bit. And doggone it! Totally independently, having had no conversation about this, earlier that day, you traded for Tank Dell? You... You... I, I was... When Boom I, when, shakalaka! Yeah! When, hit that button. When... Boom shakalaka! When I saw that he was <laughs> traded, I was like, no, and then when I saw it was you, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, Andrew! Uh, great trade. I think Tank Dell is someone that you should be targeting. He looks like the real deal, the real Dell. And uh, this week, he's my start of the week. I think it's a great, great matchup for him. 
Yeah, Noah Brown didn't practice again. I don't think Noah Brown's out there in his 170-something yards he's been bringing to the table every week. Yeah, you got Robert Woods still limited coming back from an injury. Nico Collins still coming back from an injury. Noah Brown out in a perfect matchup against the Cardinals. So, I, I you know, Tank Dell, congrats. Yeah, I had a Amari Cooper problem I had to fix. I'm, I was pretty worried about Amari Cooper. Uh, also have Jerome Ford on the team. Didn't really want two Browns with Dorian Thompson-Robinson out there this week. And Tank Dell was a... It's so, a really nice fix. So what are you doing with Nico Collins? Is is he just right back in your lineup? I think because of the yeah, I think because of the Noah Brown injury, he'd right, be right back in there against the Cardinals defense. They're twenty second against wideouts in the last six weeks, but I think and, Tank Dell's the man this week. And let me question your because I I think uh, Devin Singletary is a great play. There's not many uh, matchups as good as the Arizona Cardinals for running back, and we saw what he did last week. And you know he's going to have all the work, but I want to see how high you're willing to start him. Would you start? Um, Javante Williams against Minnesota or Devin Singletary against Arizona? I do think that those two are going to have very similar outputs. Javante, I've looked into recently. He's over 20 carries uh, the last couple of weeks, opportunity-wise. He's been very involved. Um, Man, Arizona is bad against mm -hmm. the run. They're, they're giving up like 24 fantasy points. They found something last week with Singletary. Their favorite. I'm going to lean Singletary by just a little bit. Okay, so if you're leaning Singletary there, I would imagine you're also leaning Singletary over, say, Rashad White in, against San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, yeah, I am. Although White will be fine because he always is. All right, two more very difficult ones. With um, Singletary? With, with Singletary. Would you rather start Singletary uh, in this great matchup or Saquon Barkley with Danny DeVito? Singletary. Okay, and the final one. Although in, Barkley, I think we'll have a good week this week, and I've been—he's on a roster. I want to throw. Did we cover that game yesterday? We did, Brooks. Yes. Yeah. Let me say something really quickly. I, I watched some interviews because there's been some question about the ankle and how he re-injured it. There's a couple of really interesting locker room interviews right now with Saquon, including him talking about the atmosphere of the team and how he says it doesn't feel like a two and eight team that they're having fun in practice. That like hmm. there's a lot of joy and optimism and. I, I was just kind of shocked to hear all that, but it didn't sound like a guy who was hurting, and it didn't sound like a guy who wasn't about to get 25 carries against Washington, but I like the Singletary matchup okay. more. And then in this same game, another great matchup, another guy that's going to get most of the work, James Conner. You're going Singletary over all these guys, aren't you? I'm going favored Devin Singletary. The hardest part with Singletary right now for managers is that Damian Pierce will come back at some point, and their offensive coordinator has already come out and, and publicly stated Nothing is changing, is what he said. He right. says he likes to have both backs to share the workload, and so there will be some tough decisions to be made. I think it'll be easy decisions. When when Damian Pierce comes back, you don't play either. That's the way I'm approaching it. I mean, if they were playing against the Cardinals, sure, or, or Carolina, sure, yeah. but in most matchups, before the injury, these two players were irrelevant. Yeah, it's one of those things. I wonder where Singletary would be with how Houston is playing this season. If Pierce was gone for the remainder of the year, that would be a different story. But mm -hmm. yeah, James Conner, great start this week against the 22nd ranked Texans run defense. He's going to get it all. Um, Kyler Murray, of course, you get him in there. Uh, Kyler or Fields in his first game back. Fields against Detroit. Uh, Kyler, I, I love yeah, Kyler too. in this game. The the over under. Here's the nice thing: these are the Texans are a good team. They're legitimate, but they're still not a great defense. They're, they're not the worst out there, but they're not very good. You can score on the Texans. The Cardinals are the worst out there or among them. And these two offenses are clicking right now with Kyler in tow. So I, I don't know how either one of these offenses gets stopped. It should be a shootout. It should be a back-and-forth fair. I agree, and Hollywood should be good. This was a, an anomaly last week with the one reception. You know, Trey McBride right back into your lineup this week. Huge target share. I do expect Connor to be more involved but in the passing game, but it doesn't matter. Trey McBride is a start. You know, I looked at him versus the Laporta versus Chicago situation. You know, I think that that's a coin flip. I really do. I think either guy could have the better week. I, You know, McBride, Laporta, Kincaid, mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to decide between any of those. Yeah, it, it is really difficult. I'm going to take the matchup. Uh, Houston is very bad against tight ends. I, I think McBride could be the tight end one on the week this week. Yeah, it's it's very, very possible, and they could be in a negative game script throughout. Basically start everyone in this game. Uh, what about Schultz, though? Because he has been banged up. Um, 
I, I went to the Texans, saw, read some stuff from the beat writers. They said he's making progress, but the Cardinals are actually really good against tight ends. Yeah, their scheme uh, has not given up much to the tight end position, but I don't know that you're going to have better options out there on the waiver wire than a guy Logan who, Thomas. Uh, okay, Logan Thomas, I would be fine pivoting, the Giants. To, p pivoting to that. Um, he's had enough targets recently, and, and the Giants also aren't great against tight ends. Um, but, I mean, if you look at the last five games, Dalton Schultz is on pace for 132 targets. That's rare how, at tight end. How do they have so many amazing <laughs> pass-catching weapons? Uh, CJ Stroud. Dell and Collins and Brown and Schultz. And then Singletary catches the touchdown. It's wild. It's yeah. wild. Uh, Tampa Bay, 4-5. and five. San Francisco, 6-3. and three. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco, minus 12. A hearty 12. They do not think this game will be difficult. I mean, that's a lot of points. Uh, what you have seen from the San Francisco 49ers is about six dominant games and three uh, really, really disappointing games. You're talking about they either score over 30 or they score 17 points. That's literally what's happened every single game of the year, and those three losses are without Debo Samuel, and every other win is with Debo Samuel. He helps make the offense work. They also traded, obviously, on their bye week. Uh, for a star defensive lineman from the Manders, and that was scary. That off that that defensive line was was scary the first week out. It makes this, you know, the way they play makes this pretty simple. At home, it, it heavily favored, you know, McCaffrey. The matchup's hardest for him, but he's a pass catcher as well. So uh, you know, it's it's nothing I'm worried about. Purdy was your start of the week yesterday. McCaffrey's in. Ayuk's my start of the week, and I think Debo is right there with him. Like, Debo had his first game back last week, scored a touchdown. You know, I think he is just as capable of taking advantage of this bleeding secondary for Tampa as Ayuk is. Um, and yep. so I think both those guys are locks. I would agree both those guys are locks. They're going to score. They're going to put up 30 points, the San Francisco 49ers are. And if they do, that means that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be throwing the ball. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin are both fine plays. I know that the San Francisco 49ers defense is great, but against wide receivers, they haven't they're they're twenty fifth on the year. They're top five against the other positions, but you could throw on them at wide receiver sometimes because you have to because the 49ers are scoring points. I'm not scared off of Evans I would, or Godwin. I would be willing to pivot off of Godwin. I'd be willing to go to the tank Dell way sure, for uh, sure. It, I'd be willing to go If you've got a tank Dell you know, type option. Hollywood sure. uh, who had a worse game. I'd play Hollywood over Godwin. Godwin's Godwin's ceiling isn't there this year. He has three double digit games in nine opportunities and those were 15, 10 and 15. Like there are no games like the Evans games. That's fair. And the last two weeks, two catches, four catches, 2.6 fantasy points and seven. So that would be the one I'm a little nervous about because I don't know how many opportunities to score they're going to have. Did you see their implied point total? It's uh, 14. Point eight. That feels wrong to me. Well, I look, it is what it is. Yeah. So Kate Otten, not in there. Rashad White, probably not the ceiling you want, although Jason's right. I mean, they are going to be uh, negative game script. Could get some, you know, could be one of those like last two drives of the game. Rashad White has five catches. Yeah, you're hoping for that gar garbage time uh, checkdowns, but uh, it, you're, you're not in love with this matchup. All right, quick break. Back with some more matchups. The New York Jets are 4-5. and five. They take on the 5-5 five and five Buffalo Bills. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo minus 7 at home. The over-under is 39.5, and... A half and what happens if Garrett Wilson is not active in this game? Yeah, let's start there. Robert Sala says he feels good about Garrett Wilson playing. I do think he'll be out there, but he says he has a couple hurdles to clear. With him, they have a 16-point implied point total. Um, You know, this is really tough. Zach Wilson has five passing touchdowns and eight starts. Yeah, he he's he's They can't score enough to compete in this game. He's looked okay between the 20s. Zach Wilson has, but they he does not know how when the field shrinks, he just does not know what to do. Uh the the offensive line unfortunately isn't really good enough to open up great things for Brees Hall. I mean, last week you did finally have a Jets offensive touchdown, a Brees Hall rushing touchdown. 
the wait, nope, offensive holding, called back. Um, so maybe uh, you can get um, a, a red zone touchdown from Brees in this game. Thankfully, the Buffalo Bills, they're not great at stopping the run. Uh, the last six weeks, they're 26th, giving up 21.7 fantasy points per game to the running back and half PPR scoring. So they they will do everything they can to stop the run in this game, though. Yeah. That will be the scheme. That is the difference in those broad numbers sometimes. It's like, try to beat us, Zach. Try. You know, Tyler Conklin has been the most involved pass catcher in this offense outside of Garrett Wilson, actually. Because I've done a lot of deep diving at the tight end position for some bye weeks in the last two weeks. Do you know what Conklin's numbers are? Because you probably didn't want to watch them. Uh, tell me. Six for 66, seven for 70. Mm, mark of the beast in there. Uh, sure. Well, that that was the mark of, yeah, Zach Wilson. Um, <laughs> yeah, Brees Hall's in there. Garrett Wilson, if he plays, you know, you can start him, but it, it's nervous. It's nervous time every week. On the other side of the ball, Stephon Diggs had his first bus game of the year. You're playing him. You're playing him, but if you want back-to-back -back bus games, you put him up against the New York Jets. You obviously cannot start Gabe Davis in a game against the Jets, so fire him up. Oh, gosh. Right, now, what's the real advice there? Because I know people on Twitter, they'll be like, what did you actually mean? The real advice is you you can't, through the process, put Gabe Davis in your lineup. So the real advice is you're going to you're, you're gonna have a good chance at a lot of fantasy points on your bench. They give up. On the year, 19.1 points per game. That is seventh best in the league. So uh, that's where we're at with the New York Jets. They only give up 17 points to wide receivers. Um, you know, the last few weeks, they've given up 14, 13, 27 to the Chargers, and then 16 last week. So I don't think you're going to have ceiling for any of the Bills guys, but you are going to have some stable – numbers because they're just gonna have the ball a lot mm -hmm. Dalton Kincaid comfortable oh yeah Dalton Kincaid is fine it's not a great matchup but when when Dawson Knox has been out Dalton Kincaid has had so many targets he's really the the wide receiver too for this team and you expect Sauce Gardner to be on Stephon Diggs so Dalton Kincaid's gonna be important James Cook James Cook's an all right play um keep in mind with the the Bills they they fired their offensive coordinator. Yes. Um, so there's going to be an offensive shift, but this is someone coming in from out of the building. You're not going to be able to make wholesale changes. I think what you are going to try to do is put your best players out there. So I'm I'm a little bit hopeful that in this game you're going to see more James Cook than Latavius Murray because they're going to say, hey, our offense has been struggling. You brought me in to fix it. I want the explosive athletes on the field not the old veterans who are a great locker room guy, but not getting it done on the field. So I, I'm a little bullish on James Cook. I, I would like to start him this week. The only thing I'll say negative there is that in the back of my mind, if if the ball gets popped out by this ferocious defense, James Cook is, is going to be back in the doghouse because he had the fumble, finally came back, had another fumble that bounced right into his hands, fortunately, but that is always scary in the back of your mind that one false move could take him off the field. I, ironically... I believe that was his first fumble of his career. First and second. When, when, well, yes, but I'm saying the one that got him just straight benched to hurt your team. Yeah. It was like, this, is, this isn't this is Antonio Gibson. Hey, look, the logic, the rational coaching is irrelevant. It's yeah. just what we saw. Seattle 6-3, and three, the Rams are 3-6, and six, the DraftKings Sportsbook line Seattle minus one. The over-under is 46 points. And Matthew Stafford making his return. Yes, sir. This is great news. Um, the last time that we saw a game in Los Angeles between these two teams, uh, there was a lot of fantasy uh, goodness to be had. Um, I believe Geno Smith threw three touchdowns, 300-plus yards, had himself a, a great game last year. Uh, obviously we saw them in week one this year where the Rams won 30 to 13. So uh, in a dome in division with Stafford back with Cooper cup, healthy with Puka healthy off the bye, I'm, I'm actually pretty hopeful that this could be a, a great fantasy game. Little worried with Matthew Stafford's first game back and the, the reinforced interior. It's all right. You got, you got Carson Wentz. 
backing them up. Uh, that I mean, great point, yeah, Jason. Great so point. No uh, worries. Are you the Wentz side of yes, the, the I, bet? of the of the Matt Ryan Carson Wentz? I need him to just get a snap. I'll tell you this: I would take the under in this game. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think that the Los Angeles Rams are going to be able to move the ball on the ground at all. And Stafford first came back with the injury. You talked about his effectiveness being diminished when he had this injury before. Um, only Jordan Love is a lower completion percentage than Stafford this year, um, despite the elite weapons. Like, I I do worry a little bit about the hindrance of not having Kyron Williams like they did in Week One, and having Daryl Henderson and Royce Freeman to depend upon. I would take the under. Geno Smith and that offense isn't playing well. The Rams play very slowly. We don't like that. Um, that's a concern for me. So, you know, I'm probably less bullish on it being a bonanza, but you certainly hope you can get, you know, Cooper Cup and Puka back involved in the fantasy mix. Tyler Lockett has been very good. DK Metcalf is not. Yeah, I mean, you're you're still going to be starting DK Metcalf. You're going to be starting Tyler Lockett. Um, I you know, I, I think on the Rams side, you're obviously starting Cooper Cup. And I believe that in most situations, you should also be starting Puka Nakua. He's very, very good. Puka or Hollywood? Puka. Um, Puka or Tank Dell? Tank. Puka or Nico Collins? Puka. So there you go. That kind of orders it for you a little bit in my mind. Uh, I also think that the... Puka or Tyler Lockett in this game? That's really, really interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean the home team here with Puka. Okay. Um, Puka to me is uh, is like a top top twenty wide receiver for sure this week. A, a solid wide receiver too, and I think that they will be able to move the ball on the ground. Daryl Henderson's averaging fifteen point seven opportunities in his time. This is his last hurrah, uh, you know, uh, presumably before Kyron Williams comes back. And the Seattle Seahawks they've not been able to stop the run recently over the last six weeks. They're thirty first in fantasy points given up to running backs twenty five point five on average per game. So I'm not I'm not scared of the not, not no Leonard Williams uh, uh, it, it, interest there? No, I mean, obviously they did trade for Leonard Williams. That should make an impact. I don't believe it did last week, though. No, uh, yeah, I mean, Brian Robinson had the big game. It was through the air. I don't, I don't know that he got a lot on the ground last week. Yeah, they didn't do much on the ground. They threw it all day. Yeah, yeah. That'll be fun to watch. Kenneth Walker. He's a wild card. Yeah. Uh, I I don't I guess know how you just bench play him. him. You just play him. Yeah. Uh, Geno Smith is a bench. Uh, Geno. Are you okay with him this week? I, I'm o I'm okay with him this week. Um, you know, last week 369 and two. Last time he played the Rams in in L.A., I I brought it up. He had an awesome game. Uh, I I think he could get back on track. I'm not like looking to play him, but in a two quarterback league, super flex, I think he's a good second option. Would you play Howell over him this week? Yes, against I would him? play okay. Howell. The Minnesota Vikings are six and four. They take on the four and five Denver Broncos. Both of these teams on fire right now. Minnesota's won five straight games. Denver's run won three straight games. And Denver three straight, but two of them were against Kansas City and Buffalo. Yeah, I mean you it's very interesting looking towards the fantasy playoffs and looking at the Denver defense and seeing some good matchups and saying, Am I gonna go from hating the Denver defense to playing the Denver defense? Yeah. Because they have been very good. I mean, look, they're fifth against quarterbacks over the last six weeks. They're second against wideouts over the last six weeks. I don't like the wide receivers in this game. I would not try to. I would not be trying to play Jordan Addison in this game. Really? Yeah, I think it's all. I think it's T.J. Hawkinson's show. Oh my gosh! I apologize earlier for saying I thought that Trey McBride could be the tight end one on the week. The, that ain't against advanced Joseph defense. T.J. Hawkinson getting forty-one and forty-seven percent target share with Josh Dobbs. T.J. Hawkinson will be the tight end one. This what about uh, if Jefferson's back? Obviously, you're going to go right back to him. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. would be it, the exception to what I said. I, I guess I'm not sure if Jefferson is going to be back out. There. It, it seems like what, what I've read the most recent seems like. I'm guessing they'll give him one more week before he returns. So you've you've I have swapped. I have I have swapped the fact that he was practicing last week and then practiced this week. It felt like he was going to be in there, but just reading some of the comments and how they want to approach it, I, I you know, Ben it's, Ben it's probably the right move to give him another week and make sure it's safe. Ben Gosling uh, said he was limited again on Thursday. 
and the Vikings would want to put him through a full practice before playing him. So um, you could be very right there. All limited so far. Joshua Dobbs. I, I don't know. I don't know if I want Joshua Dobbs a mile high this week. Yeah, it, it's really hard. I it's, know he runs the football, so it could it could eliminate some of the challenges, but the numbers that the D Denver Broncos have been putting him up. What's the – okay, Denver's favorite. Dang it. This would have been it. You wanted your yeah, I wanted Minnesota upset. to be to be favored because I do think Denver wins. Yeah, but Denver is favored by two in this matchup. Josh Dobbs to me is um, a quarterback that you could start. At, like I've got him right now as my quarterback fifteen. So I don't think he is someone you need to be playing in a twelve-team league. There's better options in a super flex. He's probably a good quarterback too. The one area that has not really improved very much for Denver over the last six weeks has been the running game defense. Alexander Madison is limited on Thursday. It seems like it's going to be t close as to whether he gets uh, out of concussion protocol and able to play. I'll be really surprised if he does. Well, let's say he doesn't. Uh, then Ty Chandler is a really good play. So you would actually just throw Ty Chandler right into your lineup? I, I would throw him into the, my lineup. He he should be – I believe he should be started if uh, Alexander Madison isn't out there over a lot of decent options. Ty Chandler, ha his skill set is the specific slice that beats the Denver Broncos defense. You just talked about it. Even though they've been good recently, the place where they have not been – is still on the ground, especially to speedy running backs. That's how Devon A. Chan destroyed them. Granted, that was a while ago, but Ty Chandler is a super speedy, fast running back where if you give him a hole, I, I think that he will be able to run away from these Broncos defenders. I It's irrelevant to any formal predictions. I think the Denver Broncos will win by more than seven. Wow. I think they're going to be very good this week. Javante... Uh, you should play Javante Williams. He's just getting so many opportunities, 19, 30, and 25 over the last three weeks. Cortland Sutton can be in there. Flex. Uh, Dell or Sutton? Dell uh, is apparently the the Dell line this yeah. week is what we're looking at. Well, my line is going to be Dell in, in most situations. Denver's given up 16.8 points per game over the last uh, – since week six, fourth fewest in the NFL. Uh, Philadelphia, this is Monday Night Football. They're 8-1. and one. Kansas City, 7-2. This is our Monday Night Football game. All right. Super Bowl rematch. Kelsey Bash. I'm sure this... we'll have tons of Taylor Swift everywhere. Oh, yeah. I'll be sure. there. Yeah, you're going to be there? Oh, I see what you're saying because yeah. you were Taylor yeah, Swift. I was, I was Taylor. So, so I'll be there. Hideous. I mean, I was a – you still have nightmares? I, I do. I think – so the YouTube comments, thank you, Foot Clan. You're, you're, you're so kind, and you were very gracious and, and uh, funny – um, with your kindness to Andy on that Halloween episode when he dressed up as Taylor Swift. I, I can't describe to you the difference between video and in person. <laughs> in person is the most terrifying thing I've ever you seen. Were, you, were act, you were really afraid. I was horrified. I don't, I, I don't remember the entire episode. Right, was, no, because if you glance this direction. If I glance your direction, I was scared for my life. And I was trying to give, like, really astute fantasy advice while I looked that way. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, it was 38-35 in the Super Bowl. That was a fun game. That was a great game. We were there. Jalen Hurts went uh, crazy. He went banana, as you would say. Yeah. Uh, 304-1 and one through the air, 70-3 and three on the ground. I mean, 45.5 point over under. Kansas City 2.5 point favorites, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook. Kansas City's defense has been very good. They've been hitting the under uh, a lot prime time unders right now are 25 and 8 meaning the under has hit 76 percent of the time this season which is a shockingly out of bounds number for just you know an average of a of a line but this well, is two great offenses and two good defenses but i mean when you when i'll you, take the offenses i'll take the yeah. over I really yeah, I, will. I, I think so too. There is a chance of rain, so it could weather could be a factor. Little bit, a lot of bit. Little bit rain. Okay. Little bit rain. Thirteen mile an hour winds from the northeast. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank no you. No problem. Um, I think it's a lot simpler on the 
Philly side, uh, Jalen Hurts, yes. Swift, yes. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, yes. You don't have Goddard out there, so we know what it was like for Devonta Smith when there was no Goddard last year. Very simple on that side. Yeah. On the other side, more complicated or maybe more avoidance because, you know, both teams coming off the bye, right? Mm-hmm. Both teams have – you know Andy Reid, two weeks to prepare, and, and I would expect the Eagles to be very, very good off the bye going into this primetime game. And the revenge they want. Oh, absolutely. So I I think – I'm not I, – I don't want to mess with the wideouts because Kansas City wide receivers – Look, it would take the rest of the show to read the names of who are going to get targets. Justin Watson, heavily involved. McCole Hardman's part of the offense now. Rashi Rice, look, if you watched the game last time he was out there, you were lucky he got into the end zone because he was barely used. Kadarius Toney, they were managing snaps. Another bye week is going to give him more opportunity. Yeah, I mentioned. didn't I mention Justin Watson? See, oh, here's what I mean. Bad. You can get lost. I mean, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, tons of snaps. So you are playing with fire is all I'm saying. Like, if I was going to play with fire, it would be with Rashi. Yes. But I'm, I'm telling you, like, there's a reason I moved him after that game. It's not that he's not talented. It's the fact that, you know, two targets, two for 17, you better get into the end zone. And I would, yeah, uh, I see Kyle's asking, Rashi or Amari Cooper with DTR? Amari Cooper, for sure. Hmm. I'm Easy. Not, I'm not that side. That's I'm, wild. I'm not that side. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I realized last game, two targets, two receptions, 17 yards, but he's actually been more and more involved. I mean, less and less well, since Justin Watson and, and McCall Hardman has, have come there. Uh, except not if you look at the snap counts. That's what I'm saying. He's actually in the packages getting on the field. In fact, last yes. game was his highest snap percentage of the year. Oh, I know. Which was just beating the week prior, which was his highest snap percentage of the year, which beat the week prior, which was his highest snap percentage I'm not, of the year. I'm not coming out of a that buy, he's out there. <laughs> coming out of a bye. <laughs> he blocks very well. In a game that we think is, uh, you, you know, should hit the over here because of these two quarterbacks. I'm okay with Rashi Rice. I, okay. I, I'm not out on him. Like, you talked about you don't want to start Jordan Addison. Would you start Jordan Addison or Rashi Rice? Addison without Jefferson, I would play him okay. over Rice, I, I've, for sure. I've got him one spot ahead as well, but I, I do think Rashi Rice can be started. I mean, we, we sat here on the show and read out the target distribution in the last game. Yes. And that we, there, there were like nine or ten different receivers getting targets. So what I'm saying is is that you don't, you don't have the ability. Like, Addison could take a game over. Cooper is going to get all the targets from DTR with, with a week of practice. Um, in fact, he had six of them last time with DTR. They just didn't get near him. Um, and it was Baltimore. But Rashi Rice is, is like, like I don't think you have a ceiling. Yeah, but it's like, would you rather have six DTR targets or three uh, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid targets? Because yeah. I'd rather take the three. I don't know. Cooper just catches so many balls downfield. So we have a difference of opinion there. Isaiah Pacheco, it's a bad matchup. Uh, he hasn't performed in good matchups. In fact, I think Mike made him start of the week three straight times in good matchups, and I think he put up uh, the last two, f six points, five points. Yeah, the offensive line is great for the Chiefs. The Def defensive line defensive is great line, for yeah. the Eagles. I I'm a little bit scared of Pacheco. Um, so let's figure that out. Jerome Ford against Pittsburgh or Isaiah Pacheco? I would go Jerome Ford. Raheem Mostert against Las oh, Vegas? Oh, easily Mostert. Okay. Mo the, uh, Mostert's great play. Um, Madison, if he was active, or Ty Chandler? Um, Ty Chandler's an interesting one. I, I think if Madison was out, I would play Ty Chandler over Pacheco. I'd play James Cook over Pacheco. Um, I would play Daryl Henderson over Pacheco. I was about to ask Daryl Henderson. Pacheco. Uh, but I would play Pacheco over uh, Najee and Jalen Warren and Kareem Hunt and Chuba. So there is a place for Pacheco. Philly, Kansas City, who's your winner? Just pick the money line. Uh, if I'm picking the money line, I'm just going to pick the home team. I'm going Kansas City. Okay, I'm going to go with the Eagles in this one. Um, there you go. Kelsey, you play him, and you hope he performs very well. He'll have Taylor Swift there, so it's been good. Uh, Antonio Gibson's still not practicing on Friday. So Brian Robinson was already my start of the week, and he's uh, start of the week plus. Is he in your DraftKings lineup? Uh, I don't know. Well, We're going to okay. find that out. We're going to find we? that out right now. Um, is he in yours? Nope, but I did look his direction. Yeah, yeah, I, he's not in mine. All right, let's get to it. 
Fantasy Faceoff, presented by DraftKings. Well, your streak's over, Jason. You finished second, I know, and so you finally have a second place finish. Very disappointed. Took ten weeks to f not finish first or last, but uh, I did it. I got second, which is the nicest place to be because I don't have to do anything. Uh, no, and I you don't, just sit here and it, just you know, sit here and watch. Just you get remember, shamed. I have to host this show. You know, there's a bear over there, so like, hopefully, it's not too bad. Yeah, probably is. Wheel of shame. You know, a lot of the Foot Clan out there had a great idea of having Papa Josh absorb my wheel of shame this week. But I don't think we're going to do that. All right, spin that wheel. All right, we've got uh, we've got it spinning. It's landing. Oh, boy. What does this mean? Chew on this? What does chew on this mean? Do you know what this is, I Jason? do know what this is. Uh... <laughs> I, this is a Chewbacca costume. Oh, oh no. there he is. This hey. is not. I mean, what am I supposed to do here? Hey, Chewie. <laughs> um, so, Fuglin, here's the thing about this uh, great Chewbacca costume is. Is this for my arms? I'm pretty. Can you see it all? You, Very minimal. You can see minimally. You could speak minimally. Yeah. Is this going to translate to the podcast? Oh, yeah. I can hear you just fine. Uh, speak up a little. Uh, uh, there he is. There's my uh, guy. All right. Uh, well, you look stupid. Uh, I you feel stupid. You sound stupid. Way worse than that pillow you gave me last week. Now let's kick off this segment with you your have a mouthful. <laughs> let's kick off this segment with the losing lineup. Who is the quarterback of the losing lineup this week? Andy, you go. Brock Purdy. Okay, Brock, my start of the week. Brock Purdy for let's see if I can see this. Fifty-eight hundred. Uh, I spent 300 more on Kyler Murray. I want the Houston-Arizona game. You'll see that theme a lot. And, Brooks, you are sharing Mike's lineup. Who does Mike have? Mike also went with Brock Purdy. Ooh, okay. That's a little – I don't like them both having my start of the week against me. Come on, Kyler. All right, running back, Andy. Austin Eckler at 8,600. Okay. Devin Singletary at 5,300. Yeah, I knew Devin Singletary would be locked into your lineup. Um, for me, I'm going very spicy, very dangerous. I told Andy beforehand, like, this is a, a boom. This is not a cash lineup I'm building. I'm building a boom-bust lineup. But I'm going with my guys. I just want to have fun this week. So I'm going with Brees Hall at 6,400 and Devon A. Chan at 6,600. I'm paying for the man. First week back, and I'm rooting for him. I don't want him having 40 points without me getting some of those. Where did Mike go, Brooks? Mike went with James, Connor, and Brees Hall. Okay. Wow, two Brees Halls. All three. right. I thought Brees Hall would be a solo play. All right, Andy. Wide receivers. I went with Cooper Cup. Okay. 8,100. I went with the more affordable than Brandon Ayuk Debo Samuel at 6,300 to stack with my Brock Purdy. And I went with. Tank Dell. Tank Dell. I'm sure all three of us have Tank at Dell. 5,900. I have Tank Dell, a smash play at 5,900. I have Brandon Ayuk. Oh, so uh, we'll have. So uh, yeah. hopefully the, the passing volume goes there. Your start of the week, he was a little bit more expensive at 7,200, but he should be phenomenal in full PPR. And then my middle tier wide receiver is Christian Kirk against the Tennessee Titans. He's been very solid in PPR formats, only $6,000 for Kirksey. Who does Mike have, Brooks? Mike paid up for C.D. Lamb, Ooh. Amon Ra, St. Brown, oh. and his third wideout, Jaden Reed. Okay, wow. That's, Amon Ra and C.D. Lamb. That is frightening. My okay. tight end is Trey McBride, 4,400. My, yep, my tight end is Trey McBride. Mike's tight end is... Is Trey McBride. Yeah, I figured. It's, it's really hard to go lower than him when he has the ceiling. Uh, who's your flex, Andy? I had to afford... Somebody here, Jamison Williams. Oh, at thirty-three hundred, and, oh. and the Packers defense. Packers take on the Chargers, but they're at home. Twenty-three hundred, from what I can see through my face. Jason's oh, jealous. That is so upsetting. I looked and looked. Oh, what an idiot I am! I looked for a cheap option I liked, and I couldn't find anyone that I really liked outside of Cardinals players, and I had too many already. 
that were under the 4000 marker, and I would have loved to put Jamison Williams in at that price and afford some other players. Big mistake on my part. I do think Jamison Williams has his coming out party this week. Great pick, Andy. My flex is uh, shared with Mike. I have Jaden Reed. He's still a good value at 4000 against the Los, An Los Angeles Chargers. Who's your flex, Mike? Mike had to go with Kyle Phil Phillips. Okay, Kyle Phillips. That's uh, how he afforded CeeDee Lamb and Almond Raw. Yep, that'll do it. Kyle Phillips over 60 yards in back-to-back -back games. My def who, Who's your defense? My defense is the Packers. The Packers defense against the Chargers. I paid a little bit more. I went with the Jacksonville Jaguars against Banana Rama. Uh, so I will hope they that Banana Rama turns it over. Who's Mike got? He's got the Jets defense. That's who I had most of the week. The Jets playing against the uh, most interception quarterback in the league. That's how you say that against Josh Allen. Um, so uh, I think they are the best cheap option this week them being the Jets and I if I had to handicap this right now and I know I've won the most times uh this season I I don't think I win this week I we don't can hope we I can hope that you don't have to undergo this this is a warm greenhouse effect situation going on in this mask yeah I want to drag this out make you get hotter under there but I will wrap it up for you this was fantasy face-off presented by DraftKings Sportsbook Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code BALLERS to get $150 in bonus bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's code BALLERS only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Andy, you did it. You made it to the end of the show as Chewbacca. And oh. I hope you're wearing a turkey face next week. We'll find out. Thank you for joining us. Jason on Baller Live. Oh, Talk yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.